one of the resources that we have consistently ignored in this country in the past has uh, been permanent pastures. We can produce some of the best forages in the world, but uh, we've really traditionally gotten out of figuring out how to manage them. In the Northeast region of the United States alone, approximately 10 million acres is classified as permanent pasture. The wonderful thing about the grazing animal and the ruminant animal in general, meaning the sheep, the beef cow, and the dairy cow, is that they can utilize the crops that nature intends to grow on these soils. We have to think of pastures as a crop. It isn't just, it isn't a holding area for animals, it's a crop that will produce, we've measured four tons of dry matter per acre produced on pasture here in Vermont, and that's equal to an alfalfa, a good alfalfa production. In good grass, the protein is a lot higher than in the grain that you feed. As evidenced by the samples that we've sent in, which are running anywhere from 21 to 26 percent crude protein. We average about 25 percent protein, mm -hmm. and we average about uh, 65 to 75 megacalories of energy. It, it almost is, is as good as grain. To receive this kind of feed value from pasture doesn't just happen. It requires an intensive kind of pasture management called intensive or rotational grazing. For some farmers, rotational grazing has become a way to cut costs and farm more sustainably. For others, it has meant economic survival. To put it simply, rotational grazing is a way of allowing pastures an adequate rest period between grazings. The idea with a, of intensive uh, grazing management is to give them small paddocks or small subsections of a large pasture. And the livestock will graze off that small area and then we move them out of that area and allow the, the uh, area that was just grazed to start to regrow. The ideal is to turn them onto a paddock when it's eight inches high and graze it down to four inches. And the, the four inches that you're grazing there from the eight to the four is new growth. Whereas if you let them run in a pasture for a long period of time, they tramp down part of it and they, they just don't, you know, they don't eat it. And they, they always pick and choose, but when they've only got a small area, they've got less area to pick and choose, so they have to stick pretty much to eating. And that's kind of the key to the whole thing. You get the cows in, they eat the grass, and you get them out. Basically, you're using animals like lawnmowers. You go in, when you mow a lawn, you go in and you mow it very quickly. Then you don't, you don't, you're not cutting it again until uh, the grass is to the right height, and that's what we do. The idea is that what we want to be doing is we want to be feeding a lot of leaf and very little stem. Now that larger leaf area allows that plant to harvest more of the solar energy as opposed to the continuous grazing where the animals graze it and then it gets three inches or high enough so they can graze it again, it's grazed again. We're uh, intercepting and absorbing larger amounts of solar energy and that is what we are doing. We must stop thinking of ourselves as sheep farmers or dairy farmers or beef farmers, we are farming the sun.